Well, going back and looking at the film on Sunday, obviously really pleased with how we played collectively as a football team. Uh, all three phases of the game, we were um, pretty doggone good, and, and we were able to hold the ball for 43 plus minutes, and I think they had it 16 and a half or something, so that uh, uh, usually leads to success. I, I was really pleased with the way we were able to um, get turnovers on defense in the first quarter and then capitalize on those turnovers uh, to turn them into points to uh, get a little early lead. And, and uh, our guys were playing with a lot of confidence. There was great emotion uh, in the Fargo Dome, and uh, fans were great. Uh, and our guys were excited to be back at home. And, Came out of the game relatively healthy, so we will start tonight at uh, 7 o'clock with just a couple of guys that uh, potentially won't practice today, but uh, everybody that you saw on uh, Saturday should be ready to go uh, the following Saturday in a really tough environment uh, at Youngstown, and it'll be a great football game, so open up for questions. Coach, describe this Youngstown team. Is this more what you've seen from the past couple of years, or does it take it on more of a Nebraska theme with both Lee and Coach? Well, offensively, it's what they've done the last several years. Uh, they have the same offensive coordinator, and they have tremendous skill kids, uh, two phenomenal running backs that we've played against for a number of years, uh, a couple of wide receivers we've played against for a number of years. Uh, the, the quarterback's uh, in his second year starting, so a uh, really veteran team on offense that uh, is used to their scheme and used to their system because the same offensive coordinator defensively, um, they come after you. They, they are really good up front. Uh, they play tight man-to-man -man coverage, which uh, we'll have to do a great job of, of with our wide receivers. But uh, they're very sound, very well coached, and uh, it, it's going to be a good football game. Chris, when you look at the offensive line in terms of maybe pre-October to now, biggest difference is, you know, we talk about clicking. Is it a timing thing? Is it just more physicality or what would you attribute? Well, I think the biggest thing is health. You know, we were down Plankers and, and Big Zach Johnson for uh, most of the month of September. And even when they came back, they were, you know, not really clicking on all cylinders. They were kind of getting back into play. And so now having those guys back healthy, uh, has made a big difference for us. And uh, it's not just the offensive line. It, it, our running backs are running extremely well. Our tight ends and fullbacks are blocking. Jedry Sears playing at really high level right now, doing a great job for us. And that helps open up some of those things as, as well. So uh, I, I think bigger thing is health. And we're able to rotate Jack and Landon and, and Big Zach a little bit and, um, and Jeremy and trying to keep them somewhat fresh. But uh, those guys are, are, are healthy. How important is it to possibly get that week off before the playoffs start get the bye week? We don't really talk about it, and we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to talk about trying to find a way to get a great game plan for Youngstown um, because this is a, a, a team that uh, I think if they win out, they have an opportunity to, to make the playoffs. And um, so we have to be ready. It'll be a great environment. I know that. They'll, they'll be uh, ready to play, and it'll be a loud environment. So. Uh, our focus is strictly trying to find the best plans offensively and defensively for the Penguins. Minus that SDSU result for them at home, they played the upper echelon Valley teams very close. Mm -hmm. What do they do well? You talked about the environment. Do they seem to play better at home anyway? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm just you, you know the scores probably better than I do. I just I see a team that's just uh, I, I thought played really well at Southern Illinois and got tripped up at the end. Uh, played really well at Western Illinois and, and won, and then obviously had a big win at home this past weekend over Missouri State. So uh, they have veteran kids. They, uh, they've been in this in situation before, and um, I think that they're, they're, they're playing at a high level, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. And you can see that on both sides of the ball. Defensive guys are running the football extremely well. Offensively, uh, they find something or they find a weakness, and they're going to exploit it. Uh, and they have the, the ability with the – the great skill guys around that quarterback to be able to do that. Are they doing anything different on defense this year than you've maybe seen? Well, it's different, back? totally defense from years past. So to answer your question, yes, they are doing everything different, but uh, it's probably more uh, of a Nebraska style defense as far as schematically. Defensive ends, obviously a pretty talented bunch. Are they the best tandem you've seen or close to it? They're really good. I, I can't compare other. I, they're just, they're really good. They're active. They're physical. Um, they're athletic. 
and they put pressure on the passer, but yet they do a great job of, of bottling up your run game. And uh, uh, they, they're guys we have to worry about for sure all day Saturday. Touching on a little bit, uh, the, the running game for Youngstown, Ruiz and Webb, what kind of challenges do they present for your defense? Well, because they're going to both be in the game at times, they create big challenges because they have the ability to, to beat you with speed on the edge, running some of their sweep pa package, but they also have the ability to beat you inside with their read zone, plus they run option off of that. And um, you know, they're just trying to, you have your eyes have to be right because they're going to do so much misdirection as well as when you throw the, the wide receiver stubs in there, running the jet sweep and stuff. They, they have three guys that really can beat you with speed on the perimeter, uh, as well as they're tough enough to run inside. Where's Carson on his rehab? Does is, is he have a doctor's appointment? Anything I think now? it's still two weeks away from a doctor's appointment. I thought it was more uh, after the end of the regular season. Coach, one road loss in conference since you've been here. What has made this program so effective in Valley play on the road? Well, you know, our kids have come together well on the road. We have a nice routine, I think. Uh, we don't change a whole lot of things up. They know what to expect uh, when we go on the road as far as you know, our meeting time, our, our walkthrough time, and, and what we do in the evening. And um, you know, there, we have some big challenges on the road. And, and you look at it, most of those games have been tight, and, and our guys have found a way to win late. But uh, uh, that just, that's not going to help us this week, other than our kids just being um, in a routine of knowing what to do, knowing what to expect on Friday and Saturday. Have you changed that routine at all in any way, shape, or form since you took the head coaching job? No, probably not. But in the same respect, Jeff, it's kind of what I've seen for 20 years of coaching. You know, as far as what we do on Friday, getting everything done at your home facility. And then uh, going and getting to going on the road, getting to where you need to be, and just setting up shop in the hotel, uh, and, and having your meetings and stuff. Not many schools that I know of now stop at the stadium, you know, just because of time constraints and those things. And and now in the valley, everybody's been to every place, so um, it's it just takes more time to do those things. And I like the routine that we're, we're we've been in. Coach, you said after the game, you know, you address the guys about controlling your own destiny. You, is that all you have to say to them? Will you say it again this week about that things are set up well for the last two weeks? No, we we talked about it on on Saturday after the game. The guys know what's at stake. The the guys understand, you know, uh, where we're at a, a, as a team. We're, what we still need to do to to improve. Um, we still need to shore up some things, both sides of the ball and on special teams this week. So, you know, we talked early, early in the season uh, that this was a football team that I thought could continue to get better as the season would go on. And, you know, when when you when you lose your quarterback, it you, you, not like you have to restart, but you have to, you know, kind of look at your offense and say, what do you have to do to alter that and and then the defense as well you know because it uh, when you lose Carson everybody's got to uh, have to um, play to a higher level and that's what more we've talked about is everybody's got to raise our level of play a little bit did you finally get a look at Zach's catch I did that was pretty amazing that was uh, uh, a, a really good catch it's something that I've seen him do a lot in practice um, but to do it when the lights come on like that in a big situation uh, and make it look easy, and it wasn't easy. But Zach, his ability to catch the football with his hands, and and he's made a lot of great catches uh, since he's been here. That might be the best. But there's some catches that we all take for granted that he's made on the side. He take the fourth and ten or whatever he made against Northern Iowa to keep a foot in bounds. Uh, he just has an unbelievable knack to, and and great body control. Where is uh, Hunter Wells? You guys were able to confuse him, I think, as a true freshman a little bit last year. Where is he improved? Where do you see his difference? The game slowed down, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, different. absolutely. You can tell he's much more confident and comfortable in the system. Not only that, he's working with a lot of the same receivers and backs that he has you know, now for 20 games or so. And uh, you can tell that uh, he understands the system. And, and I think he's playing at, at a high level. And, and for the, I, I think they, for them to be successful, he has to play really well. And you can tell the games when he has played really well. 
You mentioned me in the preseason that Nick DeLuca had to be a leader, had to step up. Describe mm -hmm. his play, and is it certainly has he been one of those guys that it certainly seems that it's gotten better as he is, along? He has gotten better and better at, uh, each game, and he's become more confident. And he's, um, you know, been a field general for us out there, uh, as far as getting us in and out of defenses and getting getting us in checks and, and communicating not only with the front. Uh, but also with the secondary. And that's the thing that uh, I think I've seen the most growth in our team is if you're not on the same page with the front as you are in the back end, big plays happen and bad things happen. And Nick's done a great job of making sure that uh, the people behind him as well as the people in front of him are on the same page. And that, you know, sometimes it's easier said than done with a lot of you guys see what teams do with motions and shifts and trades and jet motions and all the other things and no huddle. You know, this is a that's the third and this will be the fourth no huddle team we've faced in a row. Athletically wise, where does he rank from the linebackers you've worked with here, from Travis Carlton, Grant? I mean, where does that? Where does he stack? For for an inside guy, he's in my mind the most athletic. You know, LJ and him are probably pretty similar, but Nick has 25 pounds on LJ. Um, but his ability to run, the ability to hit, the ability to cover, um, he's as good as I've, as I've seen. How do you feel like Robbie Grimsley has reacted to the increase in snaps? He's done a really nice job. The game has started to come uh, easier for Robbie. The game has slowed down for him some. I think the, the additional reps that we've given him to be out there, not only in our nickel package, but in our base package, has made our defense better because you're out there with the same, quote, four guys in the secondary uh, that have the ability to communicate, develop chemistry, be on the same page. Uh, not only that, but it's a stressful situation for, for Coach Ince and the defensive coaches to say, what's the personnel? Wait, we got to run a different player on the field. Oh, shoot, we missed that personnel because there's 15 guys coming out of the huddle and all of a sudden four leave and, and, you, have your, and, and you have your 11 out there and we're in the wrong personnel. It's really helped, uh, I think, Coach Ince be able to say, doesn't matter what you come on and I can make a call and we don't have to worry about the personnel. And, and Robbie's done a really good job of, of um, learning from Trey and learning from Champ and learning from CJ how to become a better player by watching film. What do you make, Chris, of uh, something like half the top 10 in FCS lost last weekend? It's great parody in FCS, isn't it? And I, I didn't, uh, I saw a few scores, but uh, it probably goes to show you what a wide open FCS field we're going to have this year. And, um, you know, I haven't seen Jacksonville State on film, but I have a really good friend that's the linebacker coach down there. and. Uh, we saw them on film the year before, and, and they had an unbelievable amount of athletes and talent down there, and, and uh, I think they're probably still ranked number one or will be. And, uh, but I think it's a pretty wide open race, but uh, you, you have to be able to get to the playoffs, and by no means are we even there yet. We've, we've got a lot of work to do to even have a chance to play, make the playoffs. Coach, you got a lot of guys on your roster that are from Nebraska that have had a lot of success. I know it's in the past. They obviously weren't offered by the Huskers. Do you tap into that at all this week? Not a lick. Nope, not at all. Coach, you lost a potential you know, Peyton finalist, NFL quarterback. The offense has barely lost a beat. I'd like to kind of have you talk about the coaching job that's been done. Do you attribute that to just less install in the league and guys are more focused on certain plays? Or Well, we've committed to the run more to make it a little bit simpler for uh, for Easton not put as many run pass checks on his plate and maybe have more run run checks based on we're going to run the ball now here's what you're going to see as opposed to a run pass option uh, I credit our offensive coaches to be able to um, see what his skill set was we thought we had an idea what his skill set was but until you, you see it in live action uh, you don't really know, okay, he really excels at this or he really excels at that. And um, uh, obviously his ability to run the ball, his ability to um, stretch the perimeter um, has opened some things up. And then I think Tim and, and the offensive staff have done a great job of, okay, now where can we go with this? Where it doesn't fracture all the other rules we have. The thing that I've been really impressed with offensively is We've been in the shotgun. We've run some of the zone read stuff, but yet we still have our bread and butter of getting into two back set and running power. And that's hard to defend 
um, defensively when you're really on a two-day prep. People are going to practice hard on Tuesday, hard on Wednesday, and then script it on Thursday. How much time do you put forth to run and power football? Is that one day? And then how much time do you put forth to run in all the, the quarterback run game we do? And, and so the, multitudes, the multitude of offense we have, I think, makes us difficult to defend. Can you touch a little bit more, though, on Tim Polisak and just the job he's doing as offensive coordinator? I mean, to have kind of your season plan and your roadmap take a, a huge hiccup like that with Carson, just how he's done. Yeah, he's done a great job. And all the offensive coaches have of just kind of evolving, meaning we haven't just created a bunch of new plays. Uh, we've had parts of a lot of these plays in there. We're still running a lot of what we call the power sweep stuff. We did it with Carson. And you remember Carson hitting it inside and stuff. Now we're just kind of you know, maybe scaling some of that stuff down but doing it out of more formations so that um, make everybody else shift trade motion and do some of the same plays. And, and uh, I, I think we've done a really nice job of making Easton feel comfortable. And now we, Easton still has only played three games. Um, and he, he'll continue to get better. He'll continue to improve. But I think he's feeling more comfortable. Now we're going to go on the road in a really tough environment this week. Uh, where we're going to have to have the noise out on the practice field and stuff because uh, I, I think it'll be loud out there and, and, and they'll be, the crowd will definitely be a factor. Not only that, we're going against an exceptional defense that uh, is going to get up in your face and play man-to-man -man on our wide receivers. I know you touched on all the offensive co coaches, but what does Randy Hedberg bring? You know, the stability at quarterback seems to be something that's been there year in and year out. What does he bring? Yeah, Tuesday? Randy does a great job of, of mentoring those guys, of – uh, explaining the game to him and not just coaching Carson when he was here, but coaching every one of the quarterbacks because at that position in particular, boy, if something goes haywire and you lose a guy, you can't say, boy, I didn't spend very much time with this guy and, and we got to speed him up. He spends the same amount of quality time with all those guys and tells those guys, hey, you're, you're one play away from being in the game. You have to prepare yourself like you are the starter. And, and that's what Easton has done, and that's what Cole has done, which gives us a little bit of security knowing that uh, when, when and if Carson did go down, and he did, that uh, the next guy would be ready to go. How important was it to get Cole Davis some game reps? Really important. You know, uh, he, he's a, he, another one that just needs those snaps, just needs those repetitions. And it doesn't help to, to have him on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in practice. You have to have the game reps. It's no different than, than Robbie Grimsley getting so much better as the season's gone on with the game reps.